Nancy White. You can join our discussion today by typing your question into the chat box. We will answer as many questions as we can during our 30-minute segment. Today, we are delighted to have Drs. Becky Suttle and Corey Johnson here with us to talk about two different nurse practitioner pathways. Thank you both for being here. Let's start with you, Dr. Suttle. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your current role as a nurse practitioner? Hi, yes, thank you for having me today. Um, I am an assistant professor at UAB School of Nursing and the director of the BSN to DNP nurse practitioner pathways at the school. I'm also an adult GERO acute care nurse practitioner, and I specialize in caring for adult patients who are in the hospital in a hematology and oncology unit. And Corey, how about you? So I am a primary care adult geriatric nurse practitioner, and I'm an assistant professor at the UAB School of Nursing, and I'm the specialty track coordinator of the adult GERO primary care nurse practitioner track. And I also am a nurse practitioner at the UAB PATH Clinic and provide outpatient care to patients who are uninsured, who have uncontrolled diabetes. Well, you both sound extremely busy. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit, though, specifically about your nurse practitioner specialties. As you were describing the name, they sound a lot alike to me. So can we talk a little bit about the differences in um, your scope of practice. Um, and we'll start with you, Becky, please. Yeah, um, thank you for that question. It is a difficult question to answer. Um, so the adult GERO acute care nurse practitioner is trained to take care of patients with acute, chronic, or um, complex illness or injuries. Um, the population that we're trained to take care of is the late adolescent to the frail elderly population. The scope of practice for an acute care nurse practitioner is not so much defined by the setting of care where that care is provided, but more so by the needs of the patient. And Corey, how is that different for you in your role? What kind of differences are there in that scope for you? So there's a lot of similarities in the fact that we also care for the late adolescent to frail elderly and we assess, we diagnose, we plan um, for and make a plan for their health needs. Um, but with the primary care, we manage chronic health conditions instead of those acute problems. Um, and we uh, focus a lot on health promotion do routine checkups, assessments, immunizations, sick visits, and, and things like that. So the difference is that we do a lot of that chronic health needs that you see um, for everyday type continuing care needs, whereas with acute care, you have those more sick, acutely ill patients that they care for. Okay. That's a good start. Um, it still, I think, can be a little bit confusing to the general public. When I'm a, say I'm a patient, when would it be more appropriate for me to see you, Becky, as an acute care nurse practitioner rather than seeing Corey as a primary care? Can you give us an example? Yeah, sure. So um, a patient who needs episodic care, so somebody who is acutely ill, um, for example, um, is having a cough and upper respiratory symptoms, um, or somebody who comes into the emergency room with a um, exacerbation of some chronic illness, maybe that they already have like COPD or um, congestive heart failure. Um, those are all good examples. And I, I think it, it might help clarify this a little bit if I say that most acute care nurse practitioners work in acute and critical care settings. So acute settings are things like hospitals, working with patients who are um, admitted to the hospital or working in urgent care settings. So you can also work in outpatient areas, but again, seeing those patients who are presenting with um, a new illness that they may have not had before, something that's new and different for them versus comparing that to managing their chronic illness like hypertension or diabetes. Okay, thank you for that. Corey, both of your titles have adult GERO. 
the difference is primary versus acute. What's that Jero part and how does that fit into both of the specialties? So um, geriatric typically involves patients who are 65 years of age and older. Um, and that's just a rough number because we do know that it, that's very patient specific. Everyone that is 65 does not necessarily have older adult things about them. And then people who are younger than 65 sometimes have things that would require more specialized care that you would care for with a geriatric patient. Um, but it's, you know, when you get to be an advanced age, your things about you change and we have to know how to care for that patient population in a different type of way to provide safe care and those special needs that come up as we age. Um, so, you know, there's a common misconception when you come into the adult Jero world that people see that and they think, oh, they just care for, quote, old people. Um, but they, we don't. We care for across the, the age spectrum where essentially if you are, you know, teen years and up, um, we, care, we care for that. But we also get specialized training in those older adult conditions so that we can provide effective and safe care to that aging population. Mm -hmm. Becky, you talked a little bit about this or touched on it. Um, where, what facility will you be working in as an adult Jero acute care? And then I'll ask Corey to describe where she would might work as well. Where can you go with this with this degree? So um, an adult Jero acute care nurse practitioner can work in a variety of settings. Um, again, the type of care, the type of training that you have really focuses on what the patient needs. So um, you will see adult Jero acute care nurse practitioners working in outpatient settings. But the difference with um, the outpatient setting, the type of outpatient settings that you'll see these nurse practitioners working in is more of um, an advanced um, chronic uh, care of advanced chronic illnesses. So again, something like um, advanced heart failure or um, advanced pulmonary um, diseases or um, hematology oncology, for example, or some other specialty area versus a primary care type outpatient setting. Um, now you will see most uh, acute care nurse practitioners working in the hospital. So um, most of the acute care trained NPs will work in um, acute care, which is considered um, the hospital setting, or critical care, which is um, an intensive care unit or something like that, where um, you'll see nurse practitioners working there as well. Great. And Corey, does that cover kind of what you were thinking too, or do you have anything to add, or what is the difference where you might be working? Yeah, so primary care, um, most of us are going to be working in the outpatient setting. You can, as a primary care nurse practitioner, work in a non-critical inpatient setting. Um, for instance, I used to work with vascular surgery, and I would get patients essentially ready to go home. So it wasn't any kind of critical needs. They were really I was teeing them up, getting them ready for their primary care type needs at home. Um, but you also can work in urgent cares, but more you're going to see us working in internal medicine clinics, um, specialty clinics, um, family medicine clinics, nursing homes, long-term care facilities, rehabs, and that type of setting. Okay, great. I think both of you make a good point that it really is about the patient and what that population needs, not necessarily the physical structure where you're at, which can be conf confusing, I think, to, to people outside yeah. of our, our, um, our, our jobs. Um, well, what kind of previous education and experience is required, Corey, to be an adult Jero primary nurse practitioner? So in order to apply for the program, you have to have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Um, no real experience is required yet, but you will be working as a nurse es essentially before you become a nurse practitioner. You would be working if you, you know, through school, um, but then after you get through school, you are going to be going through a master's of science 
in nursing. Um, and some people are going and doing a bachelor's of science to a doctoral, um, so a doctor of nursing practice degree. Um, and so you at least have to have a master's in that specialty in order to then take a certification exam um, that's a national certification exam to be certified as a nurse practitioner. And Becky, how does that differ in the acute care version? So again, you um, would need to have a bachelor's of science in nursing to apply for a program that trains acute care nurse practitioners. But in applying for that program, um, there are master's degree programs for adult GERO acute care nurse practitioners. And there are doctoral programs um, where you can enter the program with your BSN and upon finishing the program, you would have a doctor of nursing practice degree um, and have completed your training to um, sit for the, the adult GERO acute care nurse practitioner boards that are required um, in order to become certified as an adult GERO acute care nurse practitioner. So it sounds like there are two different kinds of board certification and very specific. Is that correct, Corey? Yes, that's correct. So you'll have an adult GERO primary care that you can take if you have completed that program for a certification. And then there is the adult GERO acute care certification exam that you would complete if you had completed that um, education for that. Mm -hmm. Becky, are there courses that everyone kind of takes at the beginning? And when do you split off until your, until your specialty courses in, in a program? Um, like this in a master's? Yeah, so that's a great question. And um, this, the answer to that varies across um, schools. I can speak to UAB and how we train our nurse practitioners here. Um, there are courses that you would take with all of the other nurse practitioner students. Um, and that would constitute the first year of your enrollment in the master's program if that was the, de the um, degree option that you've chosen. Um, and then in the second year of that program, you would branch off into your specialty area training. So the second year of your program would be um, classes that are focused on ensuring that you learn the content that you need to learn to sit for the adult GERO acute care nurse practitioner boards. So um, you can see a picture here. There's ultrasound training going on in this picture, and that um, is an adult GERO acute care um, training session right there. So um, there is specific training for the acute care NP during that last year of, of classes. Corey, what characteristics do you think a person needs to be a primary care nurse practitioner? Um, I would say that first, uh, if you're thinking about doing it as a student, you have to be self-motivated um, and organized. When you get into practice, organizational skills are so important. You also need to be able to prioritize. You can't cover every single thing a patient comes in with at every visit. So sometimes it requires prioritization of what's the most important thing that day. Um, and then also we have to know that we have to be lifetime learners. Um, you don't get finished with school and say, okay, well, I don't have to learn anything ever again. You have to always keep up to date with what's going on and the new um, you know, research out there of the best way to practice. Um, and being a nurse practitioner, it's a stressful job. So you do have to have good coping skills and ways to manage that stress and, and develop that part of, of you so that you don't become overwhelmed. Becky, some of these might overlap, but what do you think makes a good acute care nurse practitioner? Yeah, I definitely agree with everything that Corey just said. Um, those are all qualities that an acute care nurse practitioner would need as well. Um, I would add, and I'm sure that Corey would probably agree with this in her role as well, but um, time management is very important, not just as a student, of course, but as a nurse practitioner in your day to day, um, you have to be able to manage your time. There's a lot of demands that are made of you on the job. You have to be able to prioritize those demands. Um, you really need to care about people. 
um, caring about people <laughs> is foundational to being a nurse, to being a nurse practitioner. Um, caring about people and their families and, and wanting to do the right thing for them, um, wanting to do the best that you can do to help them through one of what could be one of the most difficult times in their lives um, when they're in the hospital or in the intensive care unit. Um, also decision-making skills. You have to um, learn how to become confident in your decision-making skills. Um, at any given time, there could be several different questions being asked of you via your pager, your phone, or people coming in your office um, asking those questions. And you have to, again, prioritize those demands, but also be able to make a decision and, um, and be confident with that decision and move on to the next um, um, decision that you have to make and the next um, issue that you have to deal with. So being flexible is very important. I think you cannot um, be rigid in this job. You have to kind of go with the flow. And um, again, I, prioritization keeps coming up, but especially in acute care and care of acutely ill patients, you have to prioritize their needs. Absolutely, thank you for that. We talked a little bit about uh, the, the typical day or the setting maybe that, you know, we've covered that a little bit. Um, and Becky, what you were just saying kind of describes what your day is like, but can you tell us a little bit more about a day in the life of an adult Gero acute care NP? What's the workload? And I know that will depend on the setting. Um, so you can kind of give us your own experience of your practice if you'd like. Sure. Yeah. My um, my practice is inpatient. So I care for patients who are in the hospital. And specifically, I care for patients who are in the hematology oncology unit. And even more specifically than that, I care for adult patients who have been diagnosed with acute leukemia and high grade lymphomas and a few other um, blood cancers as well. Um, so my typical day, and I'm not in the intensive care unit, I'm on a um, what we call a floor in the hospital versus an intensive care unit. So my typical day would be coming in around um, six or seven, depending on um, the patient load and what time we're going to begin rounding on patients. But I would come in and look at my patient assignment. And my assignment would be anywhere from six or seven to 10 or 11 or 12 patients. It varies depending on if it's a weekday or a weekend. Um, and then I would look up my patients in the electronic medical record and get to know them and why they're here, um, at least on paper, and read anything that has been written about that patient to this point and their stay. Um, at that point, once I think I, I know enough about why they're here and their lab work to date and other findings that are important to date, I would go to their room and see the patients one by one. Um, at that point in time, I would introduce myself and talk to the patient and find out what their concerns are for the day, um, do my physical exam, and um, do um, anything else that I need to do in the room with the patient. So physical exam, talking to the patient and their family, finding out what their concerns are so that when I do come back with the larger team, which includes the attending physician, any fellows or residents that are rounding on our service and pharmacy, social work. So when I come back with the team, I can communicate and help help the patient communicate their needs for the day. Um, the rest of the day is spent uh, documenting everything that happened and um, in the earlier part of the day, documenting the visit that I had with the patients, um, putting in orders, uh, reviewing lab work, reviewing any imaging or other diagnostics that are coming back, and responding to any needs of the, that the patient has throughout the day. So that can be you know, it can be a slow day, it can be a busy day, it could be a time um, where I'm getting several pages and need to respond to several different things, or it could be a slower day where I'm kind of have more time to go talk to patients again and revisit them in the afternoon. It can, it can vary quite a bit. Got it. And Corey, how is that different than where you are in the setting and patients that you're seeing? 
So in the primary mm -hmm. care setting, I'm seeing patients in the office. Um, and I'll start with when I was with vascular, because that's a little more of a typical type work setting for for my specialty. So um, I would come in and I would see the all the patients on the schedule. And as they arrive to the clinic, I would look at their chart. And while the nurse is triaging the patient, I would review the last notes, look at any labs, diagnostics, anything that I needed to see before I went in to see the patient. Um, and then I would go in, talk to them, do a physical assessment, um, and then essentially come up with the plan for, you know, for that day. Um, and then, you know, establish a uh, return to clinic, all the education they need, send any prescriptions they might need, order any other um, testing and things that they would need. Then I would come out of the room, um, chart on the patient, and then move on to my next patient. So I typically with them would see um, a patient about every 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and then, I, so that was, I would say a full schedule for me would be about 12 patients in the morning, 12 patients in the afternoon. Um, whereas where I am at now, I see the, I see very uh, uncontrolled diabetes patients and they are uninsured and have a lot of um, social determinants of health, meaning a lot of other factors that are playing into the care for them. So there's an interprofessional team that I work with, um, with them. So they also have social work that they see every time, a behavioral health team, um, a dietitian, um, a care coordinator that's a certified diabetes educator. So before patients arrive that in the morning, we all sit in a huddle and we discuss all of the patients for the day. Um, so we kind of get a game plan for each patient. And then as they arrive, we, we do, it's essentially the same, we review the chart, look at everything and then I go see the patient and then I go and I talk to the next person on the team that's going to see the patient and kind of hand it off to them. Then I'll come back and chart and everything. Um, that is a more complex patient. So I usually see one about every 45 minutes or so. And so that means I will see a lot of times maybe like four in-person patients um, in the morning. And we also will do telehealth. I mean, we'll call patients, talk to them over the phone, and do everything um, virtually yeah. and over the phone. Um, and then also look at the chart. And we have patients that are doing this remote patient monitoring, where I can they have a monitor at home. They're checking their blood sugars um, at home. It's transmitting them into the chart, so I can see them from the office. And then I'll call them and make any kind of changes to their to their insulin that would, is needed. So you kind of, as patients arrive, you see them and in between you do your telehealth and your um, RPM or your remote patient monitoring calls. Yeah, once again, you both sound really busy at, <laughs> at your respective places of, of work. Um, I think it's really great that you're both working with that interprofessional team and getting everyone's input for the patient care as we know that really improves patient care. Um, so Becky, what do you think are some of the major issues or challenges confronting the NP specialty practice of adult GERO acute specifically? I would say that one of the major challenges today is scope of practice itself. Uh, scope of practice is um, different from state to state. Uh, each state, even though we're certified by, you know, one or two national uh, bodies, each state has its own licensing process and its own scope of practice for its nurses and its nurse practitioners. And that is um, detailed in its Nurse Practice Act for that state. So one challenging aspect of that is that what I can do as an adult GERO nurse practitioner and how I can care for my patients is different from one state to the next. Um, the, the types of drugs that I'm allowed to order for the patient, the types of imaging can be different. The types of procedures that I'm allowed to perform on the patient in the inpatient setting can be different. 
um, the requirement to work with a physician overseeing the care that I provide, the, um, the depth and degree of that uh, can be different from state to state. So that's a challenge, I think, because it, um, it, it creates um, differences in how we can work, right? And so there, it's hard to have uniformity when what you're allowed to do from one place to the next arbitrarily is different. Corey, uh, are the chain are the challenges the same for your specialty, or can you add anything to that? Um, I have to agree with Becky. They, we have those challenges too. Um, I would say a challenge in general for uh, essentially healthcare as a nation um, is that we have this growing aging population, and we now have more older adults in the population than we have children. Um, and we do not have enough people trained in geriatric care to care for this growing population. And so I would say a challenge is that it's going to be essential that we really take ownership of caring for this patient population. And in that, we're going to have to um, become more educated in things that maybe we hadn't been before. We have a growing number of um, people with dementia and Alzheimer's, you know, memory related disorders. Um, and so we're going to have to adapt to be able to care for that, even in the primary care setting, the acute care setting. We know that this is a, a problem and um, it's only going to keep growing. So I think that a challenge is making sure we have enough trained professionals in the nation to care as we just continually have a growth in the aging population. Right, right. Um, and that kind of leads to the next question then. What's the current job market, Corey? Is, are, are we doing what we, what we need to be doing to fill those positions? Um, I would say I can speak from myself and from students that I have that it seems that you know, we have availability to hire more nurse practitioners, but, um, and, you know, they don't seem to have trouble getting jobs necessarily. Um, but I would say we don't really have as many primary care providers in general to care for the general population anyway. So, um, but it, it requires people to also have the capacity to hire nurse practitioners, to hire the providers. Um, and we have a lot of rural areas in the nation. And so we do need more. Um, we also probably will need to train more as we go. Um, but not everyone chooses to work with geriatrics too. Um, and that's okay. But I think over time, you know, we need to look into where where we could probably hire more in those types of settings or areas in the nation that have the health for healthcare, you know, a shortage in workers. And Becky, just quickly, um, if, if we can go through that, this question quickly, but kind of the same thing, what's the current job market for adult acute? Is it different? Um, I would say that my answer is somewhat similar, and I'll answer from my own experience. M my students um, generally don't have a hard time finding a position. There are plenty of acute care nurse practitioner positions posted throughout the nation. Um, I think one thing that may make it a little bit more difficult is that traditionally uh, students graduating from nurse practitioner programs are wanting to stay in the area that they went to school in. Um, unlike physicians, they don't move around significantly from place to place to train in one area and then practice in another state or across the, the United States somewhere else. So I think um, there are plenty of positions. Um, you may need to be flexible in where you're willing to work, um, but the jobs are definitely there. Um, they're available for sure. And if someone wanted to find out about that, Becky, where might they look? What are some resources that you might share? 
with potential um, nurse employees. practitioner positions. Well, the yes. AANP um, is certainly a, a starting place um, for nurse practitioner positions all over the United States. Um, I do believe they, they keep a job posting um, there. And then any traditional um, job recruiter website, um, I think Indeed is a great place to look. Um, and then you can also look if there's a particular health system that you're interested in working for and with. Um, their own websites, of course, have postings available. Um, I think, you know, that's a whole nother conversation that we could have about uh, benefits and, and what to look for when you're looking for a position as a nurse practitioner. Um, so I won't go into that, but, you know, there are certain things you should look for in an employer. So. Absolutely. Um, Corey, I, we're about out of time, but I would love to hear from you just a, a final takeaway, something that you want to leave our, our, our viewers with. I would just like to say that being a nurse practitioner is just a, it's a great profession. Um, you know, the bond that we form with our patients, it's really, it's very special, whether it's acute care or primary care. And so if you're looking into this type of role, it, it's a, it's a job worth doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Becky, we'll end with you. Same thing. One takeaway. Yeah, I think working um, as a nurse practitioner is a very rewarding position, uh, particularly my experience working in hematology, oncology. Um, the, the bond, again, that you form with your patients and their families is um, it's, it's definitely something that gives back to you um, and it makes you feel like you're really doing a, a service for this person in what could be one of the hardest times of their lives. So. It's very rewarding in that aspect. And I think if you're interested in it at all, um, you should definitely uh, find an opportunity to shadow someone um, near you and, and find out if, if you want to go down that path. Well, as I said, unfortunately, we are out of time. The 30 minutes always flies by when I have great guests like the two of you. So thank you so much, um, both of you, for being here today. And we'll see you next time on Clinical Pearls. If you liked this video, please remember to like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get instant notifications when we release new videos. Thanks for watching.